Yeah, I mean, this is one of those fundamental questions because I think that there's something about social movements that they're structured such that they erupt suddenly, they spread very wildly and very quickly, but then they dissipate almost as quickly. So I think that a lot of it has to do with those, is where you're orienting and, and which direction you're trying to head. For example, with Occupy, like there were people who thought that it would last forever. Like they really literally would tell me like, oh, don't worry, we don't need to go capture power because we'll be here like next year and like we have all this money and it's gonna be fine. And then of course it dissipates. So for me, I think the most important thing is to realize that you don't have very much time and that these revolutionary moments always end up closing. And so if you're orienting around power or seizing power, then you have a very limited time, of time to do it in. I think there's a lot of reasons. I mean, one of the biggest reasons is that voluntarism, the idea that revolution is the result of humans acting on the natural world, is very flattering to us as activists. Because it means that as activists, we are the dominant actors of history and that we can create revolutions. But to say instead that it's something like economic forces or some sort of divine intervention or maybe it's a spiritual awakening, this displaces our agency and makes us feel less able to be in control. So I think part of it's like, is we flatter ourselves by thinking that we are the ones who create revolutionary moments. Also a large part of it just is, it's the result of a kind of um, culture. Like activism, and I say this as someone who's been an activist their entire life, it's a, actually a tremendously insulated and clicky and groupthink oriented discipline more so than I think other disciplines. It's like the people who try to do other ways are excluded. And so it's also partly that is that, you know, part, I think the people within Black Lives Matter who may have argued, let's go a different route or during Occupy, they're ignored. One of the things that's going on if you, if you actually like kind of ask activists whether or not they actually believe in revolution, <laughs> when you start to press them on it, a lot of them don't. They don't believe in revolution. They think that revolution is, A, sometimes they'll say it's not possible to have a revolution, or they'll say that ultimately it's not a good thing. Now this becomes a problem because the rhetoric of activism talks about revolution. And so you have a situation where you're using the rhetoric of revolution, but you don't believe in revolution, and so you're bound to fail. So I think the way to get out of this first is for us as activists to have an honest conversation with ourselves. Do we believe in revolution or not? Those who don't believe in revolution should just simply be honest about it because the kind of goals that they're gonna have are different from those who do believe in revolution. We should kind of like separate into two camps. And those who want revolution then should be thinking about, well, what does revolution mean today? How does it differ from revolution in the past? And these kind of questions. Then we can be honest about the negative sides of revolution and figuring out how to mitigate those without just getting rid of the concept. Because I believe that revolution is necessary. It's like chemotherapy in the sense that it's like, yeah, chemotherapy is a poison, but it's also the cure.